Now, I want you to understand that as a Bible-believing pastor, you're going to be attacked for speaking truth. People who watch me online for a few years now and also saw videos of my enemies attacking me, I am posting this video because this video is going to show that God's truth and ministry, it truly prevails. And not only that, it's a chance that those enemies, which I highly doubt, I know how human nature is, but it's a chance for those enemies to re wake up, you're right, to reflect their actions. And then hopefully they can repent, which I doubt. But now I am posting this video because I want people to see God's evidence in the ministry once more. If they've been keeping tabs on my enemies and my videos here, my ministry, they're going to see a pattern how the Lord's truth always prevails and how the Lord judges my enemies. And I hope that would soften the people's hearts and to be careful. Now, what is my mentality on this one? Do I rejoice when evil happens on my enemies? No, I don't like it if a person gets stricken with some kind of death, uh, with some kind of deadly illness. I do not do that at all. I do not pray and wish that God would curse my enemies. I don't believe in that for a fact or kill my enemies, no. Romans chapter 12, notice what you're supposed to do with your enemies is that you're supposed to read verse 18 through 21. What are you supposed to do? Treat them good. Do not return evil for evil. Treat them good. Enemies in your life should not be treated evil for evil, but rather good. That's the right Christian mentality right here. A second thing is that what a Christian should do is founded at 1 Peter. Now, we're going to look at that, those verses later. That way I can explain it even more. But I want to say this to my enemies is that I have no desire to rejoice on your problems. And I have no desire parading your name, which you've done to me. And then trying to point out how evil I am, trying to catch any, you're tr literally trolling any crazy thing that I do or any extreme teaching that I do to make me look like a bad person or an embarrassed person. I am not going to do that to you right here. I'm not going to name you out. But you got to realize this is that I'm going to give you several stories right here. And then I hope that some of the people who've been deceived by the enemies or the enemies who watch me, and not only that, the people who support me, they can see this pattern so that they can be careful what they say out of their mouth and not attack God's ministry. Okay, so then there's this one person, for example, who criticized me about teaching dispensationalism. And because this person wanted to attack me, he had a great disdain and even hatred about us teaching dispensational truth. So then he buddied up with this other pastor who hates me. And these two pastors did a, did a video where they can attack dispensationalism. They did it at New Year's. Like it's a big special thing. Like we're going to do this at New Year's so everyone can get into it. You know what happened? At that same day, so these cultic, these are actually cultic pastors. These cultic pastors, which I'm not going to name, but these cultic pastors, one of their pastor friends was caught with the sin of prostitution and drugs and gambling, etc. And then what happened was, is that all the liberal news media publicized that as well and demonized it. It was at, the news was heard at that same day they published the new, at New Year's against our ministry. Now, what happened was, is that I mentioned about that online and then hoping that the enemies could be more alert and be careful next time. But then it just infuriated that enemy pastor even more. And he said, what are you talking about? Well, Gene, guess what? I had a good night's sleep. I'm doing all right. It happened to that person, not me. You know what happened when he spat that out of his mouth? It was that same day that he spat that out of his mouth that their other hero pastor was inflicted with, uh, it was hospitalized and didn't sleep well at all. Same day. 
How about that? And guess what? What was so scary is that the doctor said, we don't really uh, know what the problem is. It's probably stress or something like that. But he was hospitalized, and they couldn't find a serious condition or illness. All right. So you got to be careful. Here's another thing. When I preached a sermon concerning my enemies, I preached actually about blessing the enemies. That's what I preach, and about uh, understanding their situation, praying that they will repent. One of those enemy pastors out there, who's a cultic pastor, posted a video where I was like a sissy and a feminine, and oh, w oh, softy, boo-hoo, you know. He's, being, he's just being a feminist, sissy, and then he's just being all softy about it. He's not being aggressive. He's not being man enough. You know what happened within less than a season? His whole channel got kicked out. So he had to start from scratch with a brand new channel. All right, now I'm warning you, you know what's sad too? These cultic pastors still do not learn their lessons. And they're still trying to post videos against me where I'm crazy and stuff like that. I I'm warning you, okay, please. I don't want you to be hurt. If I were you, I'd repent and get right with God and you know what? I feel like I'm saying, I'm saying words of nothing right now. But it won't hurt to plead with you, right? Here's another one. No, another person, and this person, I, I never even address this person's name uh, nor criticize them. And people who watch me online watch this other person's channel. And actually, I don't have a problem with that, to be honest. Because uh, I think that this person can help them a lot with their spiritual walk. But this particular person was trying to get on me concerning uh, me teaching concerning the Trinity and stuff like that. And then I think he only did one video against me on that one. What did I do? Me, I just left it alone. You know, that guy actually has some serious errors in teaching. But me, because surprisingly, I don't know if you people know this, but I do have a lot of grace. So because of that, I just left that person alone. All right? But then you know what happened is that, this is very strange. When I preached the sermon about understanding enemies, blessing enemies, and the people who watch me online are evidence of this and people in my church. What happened the very next day? The very next day, enemies started attacking him and he got a strike on his channel. Not only that, he tried to go to Patreon and guess what? They kicked him out of Patreon. That's how bad it was. So I guess this person was being so divisive and really lacked wisdom that even Patreon kicked him out. So uh, that's what happened with that particular person. And then this person just, uh, I guess the person will still not learn his lesson. But see, don't mess with God. Not only that, that person who started to uh, critique different Bible-believing teachers out there, you know what happened to him? That person been attacked by enemies video after video after video endlessly to this day, which I feel sorry for. All right. You know one thing I learned? Don't mess with God. Okay? Here's another one. All right? There's this other person who critiques. Literally, his, his channel is dedicated only to attacking King James only dispensational teachers. This guy had a serious problem. He looked like he was in his 60s. And then he would always play the video of a Bible-believing preacher and critique it every single time. Now, the poor guy looked like a guy who had nothing to do except critiquing online. All right? He was, like, very pale-faced and that he would critique and all that kind of stuff. Now, what I heard now is that some have informed me that what's really sad is that when I started to teach dispensational salvation, and that's when he started to criticize and attack me, you know what I did? This was very funny. This was very strange. My final video on dispensational salvation, where he was trying to attack me, I said this. I'm going to repeat it again, and I want this church to remember this. I said, see if you have the guts to say, Lord, if I am in the wrong, please correct me when I critique this person. If I'm critiquing this person, if I'm right, then bless it. If I'm in the wrong, please stop me, reprimand me severely. See if you have the guts to say that out loud and betting your soul on that at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, 
And I, and I believe once saved, always saved. So that's not what I mean by betting your soul. What I mean by betting your soul is facing that terror of the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. And you know what happened within less than a season? From what I've heard from some is that the person got some kind of serious illness. I think, I hope, I hope he's not dying. I heard from some it's cancer. All right? Now, I'm not going to name these people, but my enemies watching me online... And the people who foolishly fell into that should learn something right here. I'm going to quote this verse that I quoted in my other video. I made another video concerning about enemies who attacked Gene Kim. That was my other video. And I gave that same warning. It's like they don't learn the lesson. So I'm going to repeat that verse. There is pleasure in sin for how long? For a season. You know what's very funny to me? Every time they do a video where they actually do a public attack where I have to address, it's within less than a season, that's when God's judgment falls. Yeah, how about that? All right? Now, what's my mentality and mine? I want you to repent, get right with God before there's further hurt. I, I pray more so for the souls to not be blindly deceived and fooled. Because the more that you follow the blindness and the deception and you encourage these enemies on deceiving more, you know, what you're, you know what's going to happen more? God's judgment and anger is going to build up even more where it's going to fall on the enemies. And I know that you don't want that on their lives. All right, what's my mentality? My mentality is Romans chapter 12, where, you know, I do good unto them. Be not overcome of evil. Overcome evil with good, verse 21. Why? Because if I overcome evil with good, look at verse 20. You're heaping coals of fire on his head. In other words, God's wrath is building up even more when you show them more good. See, God's taking care of things in this ministry. Here's a sec second thing. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your what? Good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that he suffer for well-doing than for what? Evil doing. Look at verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if he be followers of that which is what? Good. Look at verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing knowing that ye are there unto call that ye should inherit a blessing. Look at that. Amen. All right? I don't curse. I don't pass. E I don't pray for God's evil to fall upon them. You know what I pray for? Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 12 said, the more that I pray for the Lord to show them mercy and grace where they can repent and get right with God with his goodness, you know what God will do? He'll build up his judgment even more. See, so I don't have to pray for God's judgment. Now, Romans chapter 2 says this. When God shows more goodness to a person, the Bible says, why do you become even more stubborn after that in your heart, knowing that that will build up God's wrath and judgment even more? Romans chapter 2. That's my prediction after this video. Well, you know what I predict? And I hope that I will be proven wrong, to be honest. I want to be proven wrong. What I predict is that despite of what I taught tonight and warn and pray that the Lord will open their eyes and show them his goodness so that they can repent, they will be Romans 2, where God's goodness will keep encouraging them to criticize Bible-believing truth, good, honest Bible-believing preachers, keep posting dumb videos on that, and then God's wrath builds up even more against them. What you have right now, you don't want worse what God is showing to you. That's what I honestly want. Now, this might be... You all know me as being sarcastic, right? Criticizing. And I will not apologize for that when it comes to Bible-believing truth because when it comes to the Bible and truth, I made a promise to the Lord that whatever is true, I'm going to say it, and anyone who waters down or corrupts your truth, I will unapologetically, without compromise, crit criticize them. I will criticize them. But you know what I always said is that I will do it, Lord, with the right kind of heart. 
Now, when people post videos criticizing different Bible-believing preachers, you have to inspect your heart and see, am I, am I doing this right with God? You always have to do that. When Nehemiah spat and beat up people at Nehemiah chapter 13, Elijah made fun of the false prophets at the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, if my memory recalls. And when Jesus Christ did a lot of name calling at the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 23, see, I make sure that this is done according to Bible-believing truth and in the right heart, not out of a uh, heart filled with spite, but in righteous indignation. But at the same time, my heart is not so wicked where uh, I have such anger and spite that, I'm gonna, that this will be my whole ministry is criticizing these people. See, that shows what's really in your heart. You just want to criticize, not me. I just want to show truth. And in truth, you've seen my endless videos. If I have to criticize, I criticize. If I, if I have to approve, I'll approve. If I have to do verse-by-verse -verse Bible study, I'll do that. If you want to listen to a deep doctrine, I'll do that. That's me. Not a whole channel on, let's crucify any preacher out there, and I want to criticize all of them, and that is my life, because I have such spite and anger. There's something wrong with your head and your heart after that. Get right with the Lord, please. This is what I'm going to honestly say so you can see my heart, okay? If these enemies... What I honestly want is that if they, let's say, they get right with God, they repent, and the Lord shows them his goodness, and then they don't get that judgment that they're going through right now, I honestly have a desire that they do not get that judgment from God, that they will be right with God, and they will have happier lives than me. I honestly believe that. You know why? I've been through enough suffering and hurt and criticisms from people. I've been through that many years. So you know what? I, I've learned to stomach it. I can put that up for the Lord. Members and onliners betraying me, putting me down, stuff like that, I'm used to that. I've been through that for many years, so I'm used to that. So if their ministries are more happy than mine when they get right with God and they miss out God's judgment, I honestly believe and I honestly want them to do much better than me. I'm used to the suffering and pain. You know why? I know what I signed up for is that I have an incredible burden for souls in Bible-believing truth. I can't back down. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight's teaching has been eye-opening, been a blessing to the hearers, and uh, very serious, especially the people out there who are watching and my enemies. Protect this church. Protect this ministry, Lord. It's yours. I want to thank you so much, Lord, how you've proven your power to protect this church. I can't condemn it, Lord, on how you do things. I have to thank you for them. Thank you, Lord. It's such a miracle. Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? I'm just nothing. And compared to my enemies, Lord, if I was in their shoes, you know what I deserved? Was hell, Lord. I don't know why you would choose me to preach your word, your truth, and you would protect me so many times when so many other good Christians out there deserve more than I do. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I also want to pray at the same time, will you please do whatever it takes, please, so that these enemies out there, they can get right with you. Even if they'll hate me forever or they'll not like me forever, at least where they can get something straightened out, at least, Lord, where they don't have to damage your Bible-believing truth more, at least. Uh, can, can you soften them some way in some way, please, so that they don't have to get severe judgment? Here's my big prayer, Lord. Don't show them goodness where it will encourage them to keep doing more evil and that you severely judge them harsher after that. I pray that will not be the case. I would actually prefer that um, they would get right right now or that the judgment will end it right here rather than getting their lives worse, to be very honest. All I can ultimately say, Lord, is do what you do is best. You know what's best, Lord. So I'm just going to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.